Am I making this video because Phantom Liberty is the most relevant topic at the moment? Phantom Liberty is old news. You're late, as always. I know, I'm sorry, just life happened and then I spent a lot of days hugging my knees in the shower. Really? Okay, I don't shower but I will be more consistent from now on, promise. With the release of the new DLC, Cyberpunk 2077 has finally reached 96% of what it could have been. And I say 96 because there's always room for improvement and if you flip 96 around you get 69 and that's <laughs> nice. I'll try to make as little jokes as possible in order to give this DLC the respect it deserves because it is pure art. It knocked the wind out of me, I had me gasping for air, I feel older why sir i saw god and asked why we do not have a sequel for this masterpiece it's confidential oh come on why not no i can't anyway how is your sex life dramatic oh absolutely but what's life without a little drama at least that's what cdpr said when they made this dlc because oh my god the visuals the story the music and the sheer size you can tell this was made with love unlike me yeah, I'm actually Voldemort. No, but seriously, what I love about this DLC is how they managed to turn Idris Elba into... Whoa, whoa, spoilers? The video is titled Phantom Liberty. What did you think I was going to talk about? The climate crisis? But yeah, spoilers, I guess. So, uh, were you going to finish that sentence? Oh yeah, I love that they turned Idris Elba into a human rocket. What really sets this DLC apart is the artistic use of symbolism. It made the whole experience visceral, but this was not the first time the creators have used symbols to tell the story. In the main game, the most glaring use of symbols was with Taro. Hey, look. Not a personal favorite, as it was too in my face. Like, chill, give my father a goat or two first. But the DLC is so wonderfully subtle with it. They used colors, lighting angles, music, and most of all, drama to tell a story. Yes, the main game also has these elements, but it was kind of overshadowed by other things, from failing to meet expectations to straight up being unfinished. And bugs! <laughs> yes, bugs. But that was never really an issue for me because I have extremely low standards, and it's not like the DLC is devoid of bugs. Where they failed us in the main game is with storytelling. Everything felt rushed and incomplete. The story itself is quite rich and covers a lot of intense topics, but it fails to invoke the response it is supposed to because of improper pacing. Right when I'm about to feel something, it is cut short. The way Evelyn's story was handled is a great example of this, and I'll never forgive them for botching Jackie. I know this video is kind of a meme, but I believe I make a fair point. This is not a shameless plug-in, okay? It, it just makes sense. And secondly, the villains of the story did not do a great job at villaining, and I don't mean just the Arasakas or even Smasher. V's own mortality is a villain, but it rarely felt like it. One minute you're sprawled on the floor, coughing like food went down the wrong pipe, and the next you're steamrolling half of Night City. There was no urgency, no real fear of the ticking demon. A Phantom Liberty, on the other hand, made like a career service and delivered. They made exquisite usage of storytelling elements such as theatrics, symbolism, and pacing. Let me try to break it down. The story is paced in such a way that every mission, every gig seems intentional and relevant to the story. But in the main game, I would equate a lot of the gigs to a regular prostate exam. You get in, dig your fingers around, and you get out. But with the DLC, every gig is unique and has several layers. The participating characters are well fleshed out and you can tell they have a life outside of the main story. Even those who are there for a season are there for a reason. And the main quests are a massive step up from the gigs. The game ensures you experience each layer of the story by emphasizing the details. This is either done by one of the characters bringing your attention to it, or it is simply part of the mission to pay more attention to details. The story is predominantly set in Dogtown. You have to Assassin's Creed your way through a gargantuan decrepit parking facility just to gain access to it. Dogtown by design tells a story of its own. The soaring skyscrapers, unfinished and overrun with urban rot. 
tells you a lot about what could have been and the intentions of the entity currently running it. The quiet flame of burning tech, while contributing to the smog that shrouds a town in darkness, also provides a warm condescence. The flickering neon lights and glowing embers both light the streets of Dogtown, but represent two different extremes of human progression. Have I just not described Hansen's reign? Many call Dogtown lawless, but I call it flawless because it truly is breathtaking. I could not help but stop and smell the burning tires. It is in stark contrast with the rest of Night City, where nature is subdued by human industrialization, where lush greenery is seen as a sign of wealth. But in the impecunious district of Dogtown, you can see Mother Earth reclaiming mighty man-made structures. Even the NPCs have more life, more personality in Dogtown than any other part of Night City, where the people look mass-produced. Outside of Dogtown, it isn't uncommon to see NPCs who look identical and dead inside. Maybe it is because there is a constant need to conform and compete just to stay above water. Dogtown makes the rest of Night City seem sterile. It could be the result of a totalitarian rule brought about by Hansen. Or maybe they just revamped everything for the DLC. I choose to believe the former because I'm delusional like that. There's just so much character to Dogtown and the creators ensured it did not pass us by. Not only did they introduce communal spaces like the Tree of the Lost and the EBM Petrochem Stadium, they emphasized their existence. Johnny commenting on the tree is an example of how the game brings your attention to minor details. Yeah, something special about it. Fitting, isn't it? How the prettiest thing here in Dogshit Town is a monument to the dead? You are introduced to an entirely different world as you brush past a veil of cybernetic arms. I cannot tell you how much I love the introduction of a market. It is a tried and tested way to introduce an audience to a community. Because markets are vibrant microcosms of society. It captures the true essence of various facets of life of the people there, their culture and social interactions. Sifting through the jam pack market, you encounter several shops and NPCs with songs of their own. A one-stop shopping destination that might even have Nikocado Avocado before uh, this. I love cheese. Ta -da. Ah! You're going to heck if you laughed at that. Cyberpunk 2077 has always been a coruscating kaleidoscope of vibrant colors. But the DLC took it a step further and made it intentional. They used colors and lighting angles to enhance the emotions one is supposed to feel. For example, in the beginning with Songbird, you put your life at the hands of a seemingly sincere specter who is promising you the life you were robbed of. She is insanely powerful and works for the government, and we all know that governments are 100% trustworthy. It all checks out, but you can't shake the nagging feeling at the back of your head. The game warns us of the danger she may pose, by lighting the path red as she leads you to a future she promised. Another instance of this is when we try to convince Alex to join our entourage. A red light falls upon her as she decides, and the angle from which the light hits her is where Reed is sitting, hinting that joining up with him might have dire consequences for our dear special agent. Man, I can go on about this forever, but for some reason making a video longer than 10 minutes freaks me out, so uh, yeah. I really don't need to comment on the music scores in this game. There are bangers. The music perfectly describes the situation we are at. It is grandiose and slightly melancholic. They also improved on the atmospheric storytelling aspect. For instance, after we rescue Myers and bring her to safety, it rains the morning after. This can be seen as a sign of reset and recuperation before the next big move. Meanwhile, in the main game, someone dies, so Sky cry. I also love the usage of space to showcase ostentation and slow motion to capture palpitating moments. Those were a really nice touch. 
All of the little details cumulatively make the story immersive. Phantom Liberty is an experience. I wasn't exaggerating when I said I was left winded. I think you should experience it. You always say I want to experience things, but I don't think you actually want to experience things because you would experience it if you wanted to experience things. I don't know what you're talking about. It seems like the creators were allowed time and freedom with this expansion. And I strongly believe they would have done the same thing for the main game if they had the same liberties. I guess art truly cannot be rushed. Uh, that is why my videos are always delayed. <laughs> Fine, I'm delayed.